Colonel, I implore you. We must destroy that tower. Sergeant, that tower is one of the oldest and most treasured of all the historically important structures. And I'm not going to be the son of a bitch responsible for turning a thousand years of history into dust. The tower stands. Hello, YouTube, and hello, Ninth Age community. This is Charles with Evershade Gaming, and I'm very excited to bring you a tournament report. So I went to see the tower this previous weekend. It's an Ohio-based tournament, and we had 30 players. Um, this is a graph of the armies that were taken. So the most popular armies were Hyborn Elves and Wars the Dark God, which I faced twice each, So, which makes sense. Somebody was going to have to play them a bunch. There's a dwarf player there who I think played Highborn, Ors, Highborn Elves four times in a row, which is pretty hard. Siege is a 5,000 point tournament, and it's five rounds over a Saturday and a Sunday. And the unique thing about Siege, I would say, is that we get to take a giant in games four and five, and uh, game four, scenario four, has some special rules with the giant, so that's a lot of fun. So let's look at my list. This was the initial list that I submitted. I made a small mistake, however. Um, let's see if anyone's uh, really good at catching it. It's uh, the executioners are 20 points too expensive. On my app, I use the quartermaster app for all my uh, army lists, and I forgot to hit the starting cost, or the starting cost wasn't activated, so they were 20 points too expensive. And Bill, the uh, tournament, graciously uh, let me uh, re revise my list. So you know, I dropped the 20 points out. And I had been playing with a knob general for a while, and it was something I wanted. And it, I dropped it when I picked up the uh, the more expensive general on a horse. So with the 20.6 executioners, I got the knob uh, mark again, and uh, I, had, I ran a knob army. So I have Dread Prince with the Midnight Cloak, Oversword, Hardened Shield, Push and Swiftness on an Elven horse. And uh, he just kind of ran around. I was pretty nervous about him before the tournament started, uh, and then I saw all the lists. Bill put out the list the Friday before the... And then I saw people were taking tons of monsters, so I actually was thinking, oh, this guy might have a great place in this army, running around by himself, killing monsters. And then I took a cult priest with the bronze breastplate, the banner of speed, and she was on a divine altar. Um, normally I was describing the banner of speed, but I actually like how the bronze breastplate gives her a four-up armor save on the chariot. Or on the altar, and then you know, for one round, she can have a two up armor save. That's pretty sweet. Just took uh, an oracle with four spells from alchemy, the ring of fire, and I did take the wandering familiar, which I really like with the alchemy com. Uh, and then for my core, I took 28 legionnaires of spears and the flaming standard, also to you know, piggyback off of alchemy. And then I had two drops of dark riders with shields and crossbows, 12 repeater auxiliaries. Uh, 30 executioners to the stalker standard and full command, five harpies, two raptor chariots. Unding Cherry and two Dread Repeaters. So the altar pretty much went in the Legionnaires every game. Um, and for the most part, I liked it. Um, and it actually was my first game playing with Repeater Auxiliaries in a while. I'll talk more about how I think the list did at probably at the uh, in video five in game five. I'll probably talk about how I think the army did, uh, what were its weaknesses, what were its strengths, what I thought were its best parts. So, but let's look at the scenario for game one. So game one scenario is I'm on a boat, and uh, it's a little bit hard to see everything that that uh, picture is showing you. But basically, there's a river on one side of the board. Everyone has a river on one side of the board, and you want to have scoring units within 30 inches of it. And whoever has the most controls the river for that turn. As you can see on that page, I don't want to spoil the game, but um, my opponent pretty much got it every turn. He had five scoring units, and I only had three. So maybe that was a uh, weakness in my list already. The spells I got for this game with my wizard were Molten Copper, Quicksilver Lash, Corruption of Tin, and Silver Spike, which are uh, all really good spells. Um, probably not Corruption of Tin as much, maybe to, you know, reduce to... I played Highborn Elves, actually, I probably should have mentioned that already. Um, but uh, probably, you know, it would help reduce the uh, armor save of the White Lions that my opponent had. She also has the Ring of Fire. My opponent's spells were Fate's Judgment, Stars align and know the enemy and scaring 
from Divination, which are also really good spells. Or Fate's Judgment wasn't, uh, it really didn't, I don't think it did anything. He kept casting at my general, and he had a one-up armor save. I faced two Pyborn all players that kept doing the same thing, but, I mean, they were just trying to kill that. Alright, let's look at the Dread Elf deployment. So, I, uh, I put, there's some models in the river. Pretty much every board was sharing, there's like kind of two boards of sharing one river sometimes, so... You know, it was a little iffy at first. So this is also when people are deploying. But, you know, I've got Bolt Thrower near the river. I've got some Dark rider, dark Raiders in front of that. My Legionnaires and the altar. And then put my General behind my altar. And he actually, he, he dropped quite a bit to go first. Um, put a Chariot next to them. Executioners are woods. The Harpies in the woods as well. Uh, my opponent had a decent amount of shooting. I'm going to go over his list in full uh, when we get to his deployment. Another interesting thing about this scenario, though, is you got one of your core units was allowed to ambush, or had to ambush. So actually, one of my Dark Raiders is not on the board, as you see, um, and it was ambushing. So another Bolt Thrower is in the woods, and then I have a Hunting Chariot kind of behind that hill, and then Raptor Chariot next to some repeat, uh, Repeater Auxiliaries. Um, those are some of my first drops. I... <laughs> We kind of were rolling late to the tournament, and I didn't quite look at the scenario as I started deploying, and then I realized that we needed to put things by the river, so things started on the wrong side there. Um, so this is my opponent's deployment. He's got five uh, Grey Watch, and then in the river are his Highborn Lancers. He has five of them, and his 20 Sea Guard. So the 20 Sea Guard were ambushing normally, so then... He actually got two ambushing units. It's really fortunate for my opponent in this scenario. Then he has 21 Swordmasters, an Eagle behind them, and then uh, 26 White Lions. Inside the White Lions is a High Warden of, of the Flame. with yeah, That's his BSB, and he has the Spear of the Blazing Dawn, which is the spear that lets you hit your... Strength one higher than your opponent's toughness, and as Tower and Presence, you do uh, double hits. That's right. The High Warden of the Flame also had the Dragon Mantle, giving him, I believe, a two of, yeah, two of armor save because he can use a shield. And then in the same White Lion, he has his Wizard Master with an Asphad Scholar. He's got the four divination spells, and he is the general. He had the Amethyst Crystal and the Gleaming Rogue. And the White Lion... A uh, unit champion, or the best standard bear, had the banner of a calming. So my opponent actually had a really dynamic magic phase. He channeled on a 3-up in my phase and a 4-up in his phase. Uh, I have to say, the Amethyst Crystal is pretty cool if you ask me. And then next to the White Lions, he had 10 uh, Queen's Guard, and then a Bolt Thrower on the hill, and then you can just see 5 Reavers on the other side of uh, that hill there. And then he had another five Reavers and a Bolt Thrower. So that'll finish off my opponent's deployment. Uh, both Reavers have bows. Um, trying to think what if the Sword Masters had any special banner. And, oh, they did have the Rending Banner. So, I mean, that just makes them that much more scary. Um, I didn't want to fight those. Here are my ambushing Dark Riders. Just, you know, waiting to get behind the enemy lines. So, uh, my opponent goes first. And, oh, this is a picture of his, another picture of his ambushing units. The Sea Guard do have the gleaming icon, which comes into play at a critical moment. My opponent moves back his Reavers. Uh, you know, he just kind of, you know, he's got, he doesn't have a ton of shooting. Um, you know, especially because his Sea Guard aren't on the board at turn one. But, you know, he does still have two Bolt Thrower's and ten Queen's Guard. Uh, and... I think his blocks, definitely the sword masters are more severe than any of my blocks. Um, the white lines are tough, but uh, the executioners, would, you know, they would beat them, kind of. So, but this is what the uh, my opponent's plume looks like after his vanguards, and this is actually the start of Hyborn Stern One. So my opponent moves up slightly with everything. Uh, mostly, I think he moves, uh, you know, his two main blocks just a bit so that he can get those. Queen's Guard on the hill. And then we go right into the magic phase. And in the magic phase, it's 6 to 5. Uh, no chans. No chaining Tatums, as we like to call them at Evershade Gaming. I stop scrying. Uh, I can't remember on what. Um, and then he gets Fate's Judgment off right here. And he does uh, one wound to the altar, which I couldn't stop it with my 4th armor save. 
and then he does one wound to the spearman. I must I made a one five with farmer save. So uh, not great, but not too bad for turn one magic. And then in the shooting phase, the bolt thrower does one wound to the chariot, and the queen's guard. I believe they shoot the chariot as well, and I. I made a ton of armor saves with this chariot in this game, and I think I think this was the start of it right here. You know, I think he got one, maybe one or two wounds on it, and I just made the four of armor saves against the Queen's Guard, and he also shoots at my Dark Raiders and does a single wound with his Grey Watchers. The uh, another bolt thrower I think actually shot at the Spearmen and or the Legionaries. And, Killed two spearmen, or two legionnaire. Ah, gosh. Ninth age terms. Gotta say, ninth age term. At the start of Dread Elves turn one, I charge my Dark Raiders. It, the Grey Watchers I, it was not very far away. This is actually where I take the one wound on the unit um, from a stand and shoot. And I think I needed, I think I was about 17 inches away. I was almost kind of thinking he might just flee from it, but... I, I wouldn't have mattered just killing them and then just trying to flee from the Swordmasters or something or block them up. But they fail. And then this is how the rest of the board looks. So I just I move up my chariot as far uh, as... I move all my chariots up as far as they can. They all pass, you know, the two uh, Raptor chariots pass their stability tests. I march my repeater auxiliaries up because there's nothing for them to shoot at over there. And then I... The executioners at the edge of the forest move the harpies behind the legionnaires, and also move the legionnaires up uh, a bit, not too much. Uh, you know, we both got that rune, you know, to deal with. Magic, uh, it was a dud for me. It was six to six, and I, I must have, you know, not uh, been able to cast something or failed to cast something, but nothing happens. Uh, I think he he did channel that first time because again he channels on three up, really cool actually. Uh, in the shooting phase, I do just a couple wounds to the Queen's Guard unit, and that's about it. At the start of Highborn Elves turn two, both of the ambushers come on. There were no charges. Um, you know, we're both pretty far away, and uh, you know, both kind of kind of you know dance and see who can get. I'm not too worried about charging through the rune with my executioners because they have the stalker standard. Um, but I don't know, the Legionnaires, they really can't do it. Um, they're more likely to hold a charge, so. But he pops his Lancers behind the Bolt Thrower and the Sea Guard behind the Legionnaires. And this is what the rest of my opponent's movement looks like. So, he's just kind of, he's got one Reaver, he's both kind of just, you know, keeping his Reavers back. He doesn't want to, you know, waste them right now. He's got those Grey Watchers if he needs to sacrifice anything. And we're also just, we're really far away right now. Nobody's getting into combat. So, uh, my opponent does not really do much moving. He just, uh, he just kind of stays back. He does move the Ambushers forward a little bit. In the Magic phase, it is 5-3. My opponent fails to cast Fate's Judgment. Uh, I believe he was going to cast it on the Raptor Chariot. And he failed to cast that... And I believe he got scrying off first. So I wanted to stop Fates, but uh, he just failed to cast it for me. So got lucky there. And in my opponent's shooting phase, he shoots the hunting chariot off the table, um, which is, you know, unfortunate. And I think it moved up. It was just in range to shoot that uh, bolt thrower on the hill. Um, I was, you know, hoping, you know, maybe if I can kill that one bolt thrower, uh, it might be able to survive against just a single bolt thrower. But I think between the two bolt throwers, they easily kill the Hunting Cherry. And then on this side of the board, I believe my opponent used his Seaguard to shoot at this bolt thrower. Um, I'm not sure. I think he was... I mean, if he gets out of the way, you know, those Lancers have a couple more options. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he does two wounds here. And, uh, yeah, and that's all the shooting. I think, again, I think he shot at my Raptor Cherry, and I made a lot of saves, uh, which is... At the start of Dread Elf turn two... I use the ability from the altar and to uh, reroll my charges, and I put it on his Queen's Guard because my Raptor Chariot, when it moved up um, the first turn, it was I think it was about it was a nine on the charge roll, I believe. So that means it would have been 16 inches away, uh, and I thought that was you know if you get a reroll, might be able to get in there. So I put it on that, 
but unfortunately, and both my general and the Raptor Chariot declare charges, um, but unfortunately, they both uh, fail. My general needed boxcars, but I figured, again, again, I was just, I was, I was planning, I was banking on the Chariot getting in there. Uh, if my general also made it in there, like, that would have been just uh, icing on the cake, but neither make it. Uh, and then they both stumble forward to be right there. And this is what the rest of my movement looks like. I turned the Dark Raiders around, and I moved them just a little bit to be within, I think, 12 inches of the Lancers. And then I turned my whole spear block around. And my wizard is in that spear block, by the way, as you'll see in just a moment, uh, to face that uh, Sea Guard block. Because, you know, we're pretty far. I'm pretty far. You know, we're so far. And I might as well turn around and deal with this and then just turn back along, around. It's only turn two, so... Uh, and then I move up both of these units as much as they can. I believe that Raptor Chariot failed its stupidity test because um, it should be up far there. In the magic phase, it is six dice to seven. Uh, my opponent channels, uh, and I do not. And I throw three dice at Corruption of Tin on the Lion Guard, and I get a miscast, and my opponent lets it go. He didn't, I mean, not that he wanted it to go off, but he figured the miscast would hurt me, and it does. I think I just roll up, I don't think I roll an amnesia, uh, but I do roll enough, and I, I do seven wounds to the spear block. So that was quite unfortunate. Um, to lose that many on that spell, and that's nothing else happens in the match. In the shooting phase, I shoot with the Dark Raiders at the Highborn Lancers, and they poke through one wound. And then I shoot the Bolt Thrower at the Highborn Lancers, um, but he makes all his armor saves, unfortunately. I think I did three wounds, so I mean, I was hoping to maybe panic these guys off. Um, I actually thought they were Reavers. <laughs> it wasn't until I shot at him with the Bolt Thrower, and like he made four up armor saves, I was like, Oh, ah, uh, they're Lancers, I see. And then, uh, I believe, maybe, this is probably one of the Bolt Throwers, does another wound to the Queen's Guard, and that's it. And then Highborn Elves turn three. So the Lancers charge the Bolt Thrower, and the Sea Guard charge into the Altar and the Flock. So, um, you know, with the Altar, we're kind of even, um, but unfortunately... He's got those Sea Guard in a way, too, that they're going to be able to clip uh, that back part if they overrun enough. And that could that could be trouble. I don't know. really kind of depends on how well he rolls uh, and I roll. And then uh, this must be moving on to the magic phase. Uh, it's 6-4. to four. He gets Know the Enemy in a bubble, and I stop Fate's Judgment on my Lord. Uh... So, I'm guessing this is a quick picture. I must not have a good picture of how the movement. He really, again, like, he doesn't move up a lot until he, he had those blocks just kind of keep staying where they're at. I think he was, I, I don't think the sword master should be scared of the executioners, but definitely the, one, the lion guard. He shoots at my repeater auxiliaries with this bolt thrower, and he does uh, three wounds. I think he shoots at both of them, but the other one uh, doesn't get any wounds. I just, you know, I got the soft cover from the field, so long range soft cover. You just, I think he rolled up two hits and he failed to wound them. But this one does three wounds. They pass their panic check, which is great. And then my opponent easily beats the bolt thrower with the four lancers, and they overrun into the legionnaires. And again, a little bit worried about this combat. Um, just because it could be uh, slightly devastating. So after all the swinging, the casualties look like this. So I killed one Lancer uh, with the three pokes I had on the right of the unit. And then I, I guess the left in this picture. And then I killed 10 Seaguard, you know, between the Altar's attacks and all my Spearman attacks. I do have Hatred, so it's like, you know, I pretty much hit with most of my attacks. And then moving on fours. I think he just has a six of armor save. He, you know, he deals he deals considerable damage to me. You know, he kills four, I believe, with his lancers, and he kills six with his sea guard. So I'm up by one on wounds. He, we both have banners. I have a BSB, and he has a flank, and he is a rank. 
I believe that's how we counted it. And he might have thought he hit an extra banner. It's, there's something weird that happened in this, actually, unfortunately. You know, the altar already had one wound, so the altar didn't take any wounds. But there, there was some way where, when it was all said and done, we counted up, and I was down by one, actually. Which I didn't think would matter, because, you know, oh, leadership, you know, my general steer nearby, a leadership 10, leadership 9, rerollable test. I fail that test, and then I get run down. And this is what it looks like after combat. But, you know, I'm going over the numbers, and I just, there's something not adding up. And another problem is, let's go back to that. But the way the altar is positioned, and the way I pulled casualties, it looks like I didn't have a rank. And I actually, I remember not giving myself a rank. I thought, oh man, I don't have a rank, he's got a rank, that stinks. But there are two models, and then three with the altar in the second rank. So I'm pretty sure, I'm not really sure how this works. When you have to be, you know, maintain, you know, because I have to have that one spearman on the left in base to base, you know, with the highborn lancers. Uh, and I guess I could have had that other spearman, you know, anywhere between those parts. But it seems to me like it still it still seems like a rank because there's five models in that second rank. So I still would have had a rank at least. And, and then I, I'm I, the way I'm adding up now, we actually looked like we were tied. Because my opponent's list doesn't say you get a banner on those Lancers. So it looked like we were tied, and then it looked like with the rank I would have won. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't, you know, however, we kind of up in the moment. That wasn't the case, and uh, they got run down, and then they looked like that. So at the start of Dread Owls turn 3, I charged the Dark Raiders into the flank of the Seaguard, hoping to get a little vengeance. Maybe pick up some points. Um, probably wasn't, you know, probably wasn't the greatest move. I probably should have just uh, shot them all. And then uh, he moved his eagle up to chaff uh, my chariot and my lord. So I just put the lord into the eagle. Unfortunately, he goes to the DT, the ruins, and he, he takes a wound for it, uh, which was, no, it was probably a mistake. But I wanted, I really wanted to get that chariot. Um, into that stuff on the hill and start picking up those points. So really sad he missed that turn two charge. Uh, but that's what it looks like, uh, or that's what the rest of my charges look like. And then uh, my Dark Raiders do come on the board. Um, they don't really move. They just uh, they just end up, they just kind of get on there and they're just going to be doing some shooting. They probably should have, they probably should have moved to get out of the water. I think I, I think I got rid of them. I was feeling a little bleak at this point because I just you know huge point swing losing my altar my beat my altar BSB my wizard and the legionnaires which and especially as I'm looking at it now I'm like should I have lost it I don't think so so and this is what the rest of uh, dread Elf's turn three looks like so I'm um, you know trying to put keep you know that one chariot that failed stupidity test last round passes he moves up uh, the uh, legionnaire or the Dark auxiliaries in the, in the field are, you know, just gonna start shooting at that bolt thrower, and then, you know, I still got those executioners pretty far away. Um, you know, I was worried about the sword masters the entire game. They punished that unit, uh, and I don't have my notes for the magic face uh, on my turn three, but I believe I. It looks like I might have done some damage to the bolt thrower. Could have been a silver spear, or it could have been a molten copper. So not really sure what I did there, but there uh, looks like he put a dice by. And in the shooting phase, my auxiliaries take out the bolt thrower on this side of the board, which is really great. I think they did over two rounds of shooting. I would be amazed if I, you know, rolled up that many wounds um, just with one round of shooting. In combat, the lord kills the eagle, no problem, and he turns to face this way, which is okay. And then in the other combat, uh, I do one wound, he does no wounds, so... I win by you know two. He's steadfast, and he uh, he actually fails the first time, but then he had the gleaming icon, and he passed the second time. So I got really excited, and then I was let down, unfortunately. So and then he passes his uh, reform test to base, and this just shows how poor my positioning was with the general. So he gets charged by the lion guard, and it's. It was probably a far charge, too. It was probably like a 14 or a 13 or something like that. Or, you know, decently far for a unit with no Swiss stride. Um, but I, I didn't want to risk it because, um, you know, even if... I mean, he's got that Spear of the Blazing Dawn guy, too. I just didn't think I would 
you know, even when I challenged, it just, it just never, it seemed like it would be a bad idea. So I flee with the general, and that's the only charges. Oh, actually, he charges over here. I, I shot them the previous turn, and I did one wound, and then in the stand and shoot, or in the stand and shoot, I did uh, a one wound right there. I can't remember. I might have actually forgot to shoot them the previous turn. And this is just uh, another picture of my general. In the magic phase, it is six dice to four, and my opponent fails to cast his second spell, and I believe I stop the first one. Actually, you know, he might even cast the face judgment on my lord, and I let it go. And I, you know, he only did a couple wounds, you know, he only did a couple hits, and I just passed all my armor saves. Uh, but, you know, with a one up, you should pass both of them. This is uh, another shot. Uh, in his shooting face, however, the Grey Watchers do one wound with their strength three. You know, I think they do one poison or something like that. And I fail a one up armor save and a three up board save. And he takes another wound. So it uh, looks, looks scary for that guy right now. I'm getting lucky over here, though. Uh, between my opponent's remaining bolt thrower and his Queen's Guard, he shoots at the raptor chariot and he does one wound um, just making uh, a lot of armor saves with that so at the start of dread elves turn four i charge my raptor chariot into the bolt arc and then i also and I, I missed a slide here so you know he put his reavers into my dark raiders by the river and he actually he whiffs and you know since i got like the knob reroll uh, I think I do like three or four wounds, or probably like three, and I, I ch actually chase down the other Reaver. Uh, we kind of forgot to do that out of order, so this is a picture of how I beat them and I overran, and I was right there. So, and this happened out of charge, charge sequence, um, and I was almost like, oh man, that'd be great, like, oh, can I charge like those sisters in the rear? Uh, but we decided it would be kind of, it would get kind of weird, and I, it just... I just don't want to do it to my opponent since we did it out of sequence. Nothing's happening in my magic phase because my wizard is dead. So go on to shooting and the Dark Raiders shoot at the Reavers over there and they do a whole bunch of wounds. And in the combat phase, the Rapture easily kills Bolt Thrower and I overrun. I mostly overrun because I was worried if I turn to face the sisters that, uh, you know, he could put those Reavers in the flank. And, you know, if I just don't roll well enough, like, they could they could either hold me up for a long time, or they could even, you know, possibly beat me. So overrun, and I'm just going to have to try turning around later. Uh, and then in this combat phase, I do another couple of wounds to the Sea Guard, and they, they just lay into the Dark Raiders, and they just kill the remaining four. Um, you know, I didn't make any armor saves. I think he only did, like, Five wounds, and I just you know I failed to make some five armor saves against their armor piercing. So I lose all my dark raiders there, unfortunately. But that's so the start of Highborn Elves turn four. In my previous turn, I moved the harpies up to block those uh, units because um, I was hoping my general did rally the previous turn. Um, or my turn three, so, and you know it's I needed I needed to make sure that he couldn't get charged again like how he was. So that he could maybe do something later on. So uh, charge the or block up this middle, but he does charge the Grey Watchers uh, to, into the Harpies. In the magic phase, he gets scrying off on the Queen's Guard. The magic phase was six to four dice, and then I believe with the rest of his dice, he just fails to cast the uh, his second spell, uh, which is good. He shoots at my general with his five queens guard, but I make all my saves. And then those, ugh, and the, those dang sea guard, they they shoot. Pretty much everyone just wanted a piece of my general, and they shoot at my general and they kill him. Uh, again, they only do like one or two wounds, and I fail. You know, I fail a one up armor save and a three up ward save, and my general dies ugh, on a hibernal's turn four, unfortunately. Uh, which is really unfortunate, uh, because those harpies could have held up that middle even longer. Uh, and this is, and this is crazy too, uh, because my general dies, and my executioners flee as a result, 
And the closest unit behind them is he moved his Highborn Lancers next to the Bolt Thrower, and they flee, they flee from them. So they're like, they're fleeing in the middle of the board, and I'm like, can this game get any worse at this point? Uh, and you'll just have to keep watching. <laughs> so the Grey Watchers easily kill the Harpies because, uh, you know, you know, they've got a flank and they do like a wound or two and they've got leadership six with no leader 10 from the general. At the start of Dreadal turn five, my executioners do not rally two, um, which is also incredibly unfortunate. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, and then I just, I just kind of move up some things in the right flank, get in, get in position to do something with my chariots in the later turns. And I also move up my recruit auxiliaries to just uh, shoot it some more, maybe try and get rid of those gray watchers or some, you know, something. You know, I'm just trying to pick up points where I can to make this game uh, not so big. Uh, and then in the shooting phase, I do one wound to his reaver up at the top. I think I kill another queen's guard, and uh, that looks like it's. Looks like it's it, and uh, I do shoot at these Lancers in the woods. They took one DT um, marching over there uh, the previous turn, and I just do one wound, but uh, the remaining guy fails a panic test, and he runs off the board, so that's good. This bolt thrower uh, might be alive at the end of the day. So uh, this is the start of Hibernel's turn six. So, you know, I've got those fleeing executioners, and they're a lot of points. Uh, thankfully, they do have the Stalker standard, so they have the Swiss Drive fling. Uh, basically, they get bounced about quite a bit. The I believe the Swordmasters first charge them, and then the Sea Guard charge them, and then the uh, then the uh, Grey Watchers charge them. And I think the Grey Watchers needed just they needed a, like not a very high roll to catch them, but they fail thankfully, and they end up right there. In the magic phase, it's seven to six. Um, I put him put stars align on these guys, just you know, hoping to maybe the chariot's got two wounds right now. Um, he's hoping to do those two more wounds, keep those points. And I did stop fate's judgment, and then he uh, throws shots into this cha uh, raptor chariot, and he only does one wound thankfully, so it's still alive. Has to worry about a stand and shoot, but. Um, the uh, Raptor Shark does end up charging the Queen's Guard, and it doesn't die to the stand and shoot. I move my Dark Raiders over here. He kind of just, you know, was fleeing with his Reaver, trying to, you know, keep the guy alive. Move him over here, and I shoot this guy, and when I kill him, it actually causes the Swordmasters to panic. So they move deeper into the room. Uh, the rune. We didn't do any dangerous strain tests because, honestly, at that point, I was like, I was happy just to get half points for them fleeing. Because uh, this is the last turn, so and then in the combat phase, uh, I only do like a couple impact hits, so he actually gets a couple strikes, um, and he almost he actually he might actually put the, a wound on the chariot right now. I just know it goes down to one wound finally, and he gets quarter points for it at the end of the game. Um, but I don't end up pursuing them because they were down only two models, and that was good enough for uh, the whole points because uh, they're playing. And my executioners did rally on turn six, which was awesome. And uh, pretty much with all my shooting, uh, I kill. Uh, I think I get just enough to get. I think I kill one more of those gray watchers, and I get enough to get half points in them. And yep, that's a uh, picture. <laughs> that's where I got it. I think I think I had to shoot the bolt thrower at it, which I could have shot the bolt thrower at the sea guard. But I had to kill, what, three models or something like that? Maybe, yeah, three models. So it's kind of a toss-up. Uh, I mean, statistically, I probably kill three, but you never know. Sometimes it's full throwers uh, roll pretty poorly. Um, and then the end of the game looks like this. So uh, this was a pretty fun game. Uh Pretty again. I think we I think we played that uh, alter combat wrong. Unfortunately, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it looked uh, the way I'm recounting it up. It looked like it almost looked like it was a tie the way we thought it was, unless he had that extra banner or something like that. 
Um, but then counting in that one rank that I'm pretty sure it looks like I have that, you know, if anyone wants to tell me wrong, I'm wrong in the comments, please do. Because, you know, if that was a huge point loss for me. Huge point, you know, swing, lose my DSP and that. Because otherwise, you know, I probably would have easily been able to keep those points alive the rest of the game. Would have had my mage. Might have been able to clean up more with magic. Um, you know, not that my magic was overall very effective. My opponent easily got the objective of this game too, which I'm reminding you is just, you know, control the river with your scoring units. You know, if you have had, you know, whoever the most scoring units within 30 inches along the river. Um, you know, my opponent had five scoring units this game, and had three. So he, you know, he easily gets the objective. The battle, po the battle point difference, however, is really close. Um, you know, especially since I got those fleeing swordsmen right at the end. It was only an 883 point difference there, uh, which ends up, which would would have been a 12-8. Um, instead, it goes to a 15-5 loss for me. So, unfortunately, you know, if I could have kept that altar alive, I might have just lost on the objective. Actually, I might, I probably would have actually, you know, won in battle points and then just lost. Maybe, yeah, it might have actually might have been in tie then, because I might have, probably would have got those Sea Guard, which are, you know, I'm pretty sure they're a pretty uh, hefty chunk of points since they're ambushing. So, But this was a great game. Um, I'm going to tag the guy I played in on the Ninth Age, and thanks for watching.